In this lesson, we are going to solve this question I have here on the screen. The question says that a 54 kilogram crate rests on the 27 kg pickup tailgate as shown. Calculate the tension T in each of the two restraining cables, one of which is shown. The centers of gravity are at G1 and then G2. Assume the crate is located midway between the two cables. So what that you have to do is to calculate for, uh, for the tension T in this cable that is what holding the tailgate okay all together. Okay. So let's look at that. So first of all, to do this, I'll draw my free body diagram of this. I'm going to focus on what the objects of what interest, which is the crate, which I have here, the tailgate, and then the cable. So those are the main objects of what interest. So I'll draw them and then I'll indicate the forces and the reaction forces acting on them. Okay, so due to the pivot that we have here, which is what point O, I have what two reaction forces here, which is what AX and then AY. And also I have what the center of gravity G1 here, and then I have center of gravity G2 here, and also I have what weight two to be the weight of what they create, and then weight one to be the weight of what the tailgate. And also this here is what my tension. And it is at a certain angle with theta. And because of that, it will have what x and then y component. Okay, so this will be the y component and then the one the yellow color with the x component. Okay. So this will be my free body diagram. So you want to calculate for the value for tension what in this cable. And you know there are two cables, and all these cables are what the same. Okay, so the cable that you have. At this side here, okay, we have another same cable at the other side. Okay, so let's look at what to happen. So what's happening is that since there are two equal cables, okay, holding what this two gate, and then the plate is also what placed midway between what these two cables. What will happen is that the tension in these two cables what will be equal, okay, because first of all, the cables are what Holding the, the tailgate and then they are all equal, so they will be showing what they will be showing the weight of what the tailgate and also the crate is also placed midway between what the cable. So what this will cause what the weight of what the crate to be shared to the cables also. So therefore, the weight as not both cables what will be what have the weight of what the crate and then the tailgate. So half weight of the crate and then half weight of the tailgate will be acting on one cable and then the remaining half weight will act on the other cable. Okay. So what this means is that to calculate for the tension in one cable, we are going to use what half weight of what the crate and then half weight of what the tailgate. And this will help us what calculate for the what value for tension in one cable. And we know the cables are all the same so the tension in one will be this much what the tension in the other. So you are going to use what one cable to calculate for the what for the value of tension and that will help us what know the tension of both cables. Okay, so to do this, you are going to calculate for the value of what weight one and then weight two. Okay, so to calculate for weight one, that will be a half weight one to be equal to 27 kg times what 9.81 so that will be 27 times 9.81 okay so let's see the value of this so 27 times 9.81 so that will be 264.87 newtons Okay, and then the second weight, which is what W2 be equal to what 54 times 9.81, and that will be equal to 54, and that will be equal to 529.74. 74. Okay, 
and since we are going to use half of this weight let's calculate for that the new weight one and then weight two so the new weight one is equal to what half of what the initial value that we got so let's look at that so half of 264.87 will be got 132.535 so that will be 132.435 Newton. So that's what half weight, and then the second weight will be half times 529.74. So that was 264.87. So that's 264.87 Newton. So these are the weights that you are going to what used to calculate for the what value of what this tension here. I will send me write down these weight values. So I write with one here to be equal to 132.435 Newton. Okay, and then with two equals 264.87 Newton. So I'm going to use these half weight values okay to calculate for the what the tension. Okay, so now since this tension force here is at what a certain angle, we have to calculate for the value of what that angle. And then we can do that by what, using this right angle triangle that you have on the left hand side here, which that what I've circled it in what in blue. So when I draw this triangle, we have something like this. Okay, so I have the angle theta here. Then I have what this side to be what. 70 plus or 240 that gives us what 310 because from the point O here okay to this point here is what 240 then add all this more distance to it so that gives us what 310 okay so let's continue so i have this side here to be 300 okay so to find the angle, you can use what tan theta to equal to what opposite. That's 300 about the adjacent side, which is what 310. So this zero will cancel out this zero. So then have what theta to be equal to the tan inverse of what 30 on what 31. So let's see the value of this. So tan inverse of 30. And 31 okay, will be equal to 44.061. So 44.061 degrees. So that's what the value of what theta 44.061 degrees. So now that you know the value of what theta, you can calculate for the x and then y component of what the tension force. So let's look at that. Okay, so the tension force, I have the x component here and then I have what the y component here. Okay, so I'm going to take the cosine and then sine of what the angle. The cosine of theta will be what the adjacent side of what hypotenuse. So you know hypotenuse is what t. So that both x over what t. So you then have what x to be what t cosine of what theta. Okay, and that will be positive because what the tension is in this direction, the x is also moving in this direction. So both the x and y components will be what positive. But we know the value of what cosine. So we know the value of what theta. So we have what x to be equal to t cosine of what 44.061. So let's look for the value of this. So that will be cosine of 44.061. That will be 0.7185. So let's make it 0 0.2. Okay, so you have what s to be equal to what 0 0.72. Okay, so we are making it to a 0 0.72 t. So that's what the value of what x. Let's do the same for what y. So you have what sine of theta to be equal to what opposite, which is what y over what hypotenuse t. So therefore, 
have what y to be equal to what t sine of what theta and that will be equal to what t sine of 44.061 degrees just let's look for this value also so this will give us sine of 44.061 degrees to be equal to 0 0.6 Let's make 0 0.695. Okay, 0 0.695 T. Okay. So this is the value of what? Y. Okay, so let's write these two values down here. So I have X to be equal to 0 0.72 T and then Y to be equal to 0 0.695. So you know the value of what x and what y. Okay. Okay, so now what you are going to do here is that since you know the value of the weights, the x and then the y value. We are going to what, write down the three equilibrium was equations. Okay, this is what the sum of the forces in the x direction should be equal to zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction should be equal to zero. And then the sum of what moments about what the fixed point should be equal to what, zero. So let's look at this. So I'm going to write down the equilibrium equations. Okay, so first of all, sum of forces in the x direction should be equal to what, zero. Okay, so let's sum out the forces in the x direction. So for the x direction, I have what x, right? And that's moving the positive x as its direction. First of all, what we have here. Okay, so we have what 0 0.72t, okay, minus what ax, because ax is moving the opposite direction. Okay, so this is what we have. Okay, I can pick out this zero and then bring it to this side. It's the same. So we have what the sum of the forces in the y direction also to be equal to what zero, and that will be equal to. Let's add all of them. We have what w two. Okay, and that's what pointing down. So that what negative. So that what minus two six four point eight seven. Okay, plus of w one. That's also what negative. So that what minus. 132.435 okay plus what ay that's positive so that's what plus ay and then plus what y which is what also what positive so that would be plus 0.695t okay so this is the second equilibrium equation so i'm going to write the third one which is what moment about what point o so some of the moment about point O, okay. Where well, I take the anti-clockwise direction to what positive, so this should be equal to what zero also. So let's look at the moment. So we are going to what multiply each of what these forces by what they have perpendicular distance, okay. So when I take the weight two here, okay. Let's look at its perpendicular distance from what this point O here. And that was 350. So the moment to what 350 times what the weight two. Okay, and that will cause what a moment in the anti-clockwise direction. So that was a positive moment. So you have what 264.8 multiplying what 350. Okay, and then plus the second weight, okay, times what its perpendicular distance, and that was 240. Okay, so that would be 132.435 multiplying what 240. Okay, so let's look at the next one as of ay, ax, and then this x here. Do not cause what moment because so they are acting directly on what on the fixed point, so their moment will be, what, will be zero. So the next value that you have to take its moment is what 
the y value of what the tension t okay so that one also its perpendicular distance to what this 240 plus what the 70 millimeters okay because we have the y component was somewhere here okay so i'm going to add what the 70 millimeters and then the 20 or 40 millimeters and that gives us what the perpendicular distance for the y component of what the tension force okay and that of course what the properties we mentioned have what a negative moment so we have what minus 0.695 t okay that's what it's perpendicular distance which is what 310 okay so all this should be equal to what zero so all you have to do is to what simplify so you have what zero equals we have 264.87 multiplying was trying to what 50 okay so this will give me 9000 sorry 92,704.5 so that's what 92,704.5 okay plus 132.435 multiply by 240 so that also give me 31,784.4 so 784.4 okay Minus what 0 0.695 multiplying our channel length 10. So 0 0.695 multiplying channel length 10. So that gives us what 215.45 T. So this is what we have now. Okay. So from here, you see that what? from the first equation, you have what two unknowns. The second also, you have what? two unknowns okay and then for the third one what we have what one unknown so you can solve what the third one so let's solve this equation here so i'm going to add what this value and then this value okay so let's look at that so i'm adding them together so that's 2704.5 plus 31784.4 what four so i'll have zero to be equal to one two four four eight eight point nine minus two one five point one forty five t okay then if you have some space so that you continue okay so from here I'm going to take this value here. Okay, I bring it to what to the left hand side. So I have what two one five point what four five t to be equal to one two four four eight eight point what nine. So I'm going to divide both side by two one five point four five. So that works. We can get the value of what t. So two one five point what four five. Let's cancel out these values. So, so after doing this, okay, I guess what t to be equal to 577.81 newton. So that was the value of what tension in one, one of what the, the cables, and to do what the same tension what in the other cable. So therefore, we have what the tension t to be equal to what 577.81 newton so this is how to solve this question thank you very much for watching this video please don't forget to like and subscribe